Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 62nd PGA Merchandise Show. My name is Matt Adams. I'm the morning host on Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio. And one year ago on this very stage, I had the pleasure and the honor of introducing Game Golf, along with Graham McDowell and along with John McGuire, the CEO, the founder, the visionary of the technology. And on this stage, we also had Pete Bavacqua from the PGA of America. We also had Mike McCarley, the president of Golf Channel. And we talked about this very unique product that was being brought to the marketplace and had aligned itself with two massive entities in the golf industry. We're here today to bring you up to speed one year into it on where we stand. And I would ask you, if you would, please help me to welcome to the stage John McGuire, the CEO of Game Golf and 2010 U.S. Open champion, Graham McDowell. John, thank you. Thank you. First of all, let's jump into what's going on here. John, you just heard me say that it was one year ago on this stage where you introduced the world to Game Golf and a platform that would revolutionize information. Talk to us about the last year. Uh, so, well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. Uh, Matt, Graham, it's fantastic to be back here after a, a year. Um, 2014 was pretty spectacular. We didn't have too much time to take our head up. Um, at the highest level, uh, in terms of our numbers, you know, the product went into retail in May. Um, so really, we're nine months in, in market. Um, and in that time, over 170,000 rounds of golf have been logged on the platform. Whoa. We have over 11 million golf shots um, have been stored, which is about 2 billion GPS data points which is how golfers are traversing golf courses. Um, four to 5,000 rounds of golf are being uploaded on a weekly basis. Um, and the product has been used in over 96 countries worldwide. So we have seen massive adoption of the product. And really, you know, 170,000 rounds of golf when there is, uh, what is it, something like 900, 450 million rounds of golf are played in the U.S. on a yearly basis. So we haven't even scratched the surface, but it was a pretty spectacular year. When you think about the vision that you had for this product originally, I remember, I don't even know how many years ago it was, we were sitting in a, pu in a pub having a pint of Guinness talking about this concept that John had. Now that you've introduced it and you have this data coming back in, did your vision, your, the evolution of the product match up with where you thought it would be? Uh, well, yes, and then some, you know, I mean, as a guy on the west coast of Ireland, um, uh, living in Galway, uh, I don't think I could have imagined that we would have, well, certainly I did imagine we would have Graham McDowell involved, because I, I chased him for a, a good year to get him involved. Um, <laughs> he was a target, and we achieved that. But then having Lee Westwood, Jim Furyk, yeah. having the PGA of America involved, having the Golf Channel involved, uh, having you involved, Matt, you know, it, it exceeded our, our wildest expectations. And now we have, uh, our expectations have dramatically increased for 2015. So, you know, we're, we're only starting. The baby has just began to walk. One important step with that baby just beginning to walk, of course, was recently the USGA and the RNA have also approved. Do you want to comment on that as well? Yeah. So, um, you know, the, having the PGA of America as, as a partner, their mission is to grow the game and serve their, mem their members. You know, a really important strategy of this company um, was to have a technology that could be used in competition because players perform differently than on the driving range. Players perform differently um, when they're just, you know, going around in their four ball with their buddies versus when they're playing in competition. Mm. And having a technology that can be used in competition really, um, really gets to an understanding of how golfers actually perform. So that was really, really important from a, a PGA member's um, perspective because we have data such as, you know, uh, tee shot dispersion, approach to the green, data that actually 
now can really be used to develop thoughtful programs to get a player from point A to point B, whatever point B is their desired outcome. So it was really, really important, and you know, we're really delighted that that happened. Bob and Don have given me the, the secret nod that the video is ready to roll now. Let's take a look at that. That was worth the wait, wasn't it? Uh, clearly, one of the themes of that video is that it's time to fall in love with your clubs again. But I think, as Graham could tell us, it's important to know your clubs, to have the proper data that you need to know the distance that you hit them and more. Yeah, very much so. Um, like those videos were trying to, trying to tell us. I mean, obviously, people... People don't hit their seven iron as far as they think they do, um, and I'm probably as guilty as that as, as the next guy. But um, you know, I think measurability in sports and everything we do nowadays is uh, is the emerging future. Um, you know, wanting to know how fast we run, how far we swim, um, and uh, being able to compare to the best in the world, which uh, the game platform allows uh, the golfer to do. I think in a game uh, like golf, which uh, it's so statistics driven, um, you know, I know how important they are for me and my general improvement, my game, my measurability of where I'm at, how I'm playing, how I'm competing, how I'm performing um, to be able to um, put that in the hands of the handicapped golfer, of the, of the, uh, of the amateur golfer. And uh, it's not just about uh, creating statistics, it's about um, the interpretation of that data and being able to... Uh, uh, put that in, in graphical representations, uh, shot dispersions like, like the graphic behind us, um, approach shot dispersion. Um, that, kind of, that kind of stuff is really powerful. And it starts to uh, show you, as you can see from that graphic, how many balls are short of that flag there. Um, and, and really, kind of what those video clips were trying to show us. Um, we do wonder club quite often. And uh, fall in love with your clubs again. Know how far you hit them knowing which part of your games are weak and strong and being able, to, uh, being able to do something about that. Graham, you heard me ask the question to John earlier about, here we were a year ago telling the world about this product. What's the last year been like for you when you've had a chance to use it and you heard these numbers of all these other people using it? How amazed are you to see the, the bridge? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I've been involved with uh, John and Game uh, for, for three or four years now, and uh, it's been so cool to be involved with a company right from the, the conception all the way through the sort of uh, beta testing, prototype phases, um, you know, to, to be on the stage here last year and, and to launch the product for real, uh, to see people's feedback in, on, on social media, social networking. Um, like John says, we're just scratching the surface right now. I think uh, there's so much measurability technology out there. It's definitely the future. People want to know. They want to be able to, to see uh, physically how they're competing against uh, other people. And uh, I think technology like game uh, is definitely where it's at. It's um, been so cool to see it being used in so many different countries. Um, you know, back when we were testing it in the prototype phases, you know, I've used it everywhere from Augusta to Olympic to uh, 
the UK, Asia, and uh, you know, I think um, you know. I used it on golf courses that we hadn't even geofenced back in the day. You know, literally, I'd call John up and say, I just posted a round there at uh, Pudong Golf Course in Shanghai. And he says, well, let me have the lads put a, put a geofence around that, you know, te technical terms for making sure the GPS data would actually work and uh, being able to be part of, of, the, of the sort of development of the product and, and to, see, to see the data there that we've used this, this product in 96 countries now is, uh, is pretty cool. So uh, it's been a lot of fun to be part of. And, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, the future is definitely bright for this type of technology. It makes you feel smarter just hanging out with him, doesn't it? Yeah, I just kind of want to rub some, rub some intelligence off him. And he just said geofencing, which is <laughs> fantastic. Makes you proud. Doesn't yeah, it? <laughs> makes me very proud. Yeah. When was the last time you heard geofencing? All right, John. So I, I have a really a two-part question for you. First of all, from the time that you introduced the game platform, what have you done to change and evolve the product? And then I wonder if we could go down the road to some of these numbers that Graham was referencing. Kind of give us a a picture, a demographic picture, if you will, of those that have used it as yet. Okay, so um, uh, so the so Graham versus the the average golfer. So golfers that are in the let's start with the demographic. So so golfers that are in the uh, 90 to 95 average scoring range. You know they're coming in at 196 uh, yards in their in their distance off the tee box. They're coming in fairway accuracy, greens and regulation. You know it's it's uh, fairway accuracy is about 40 percent. Greens and regulation is 23 percent, approximately those numbers. Um, the golfer that's scoring on a range of 70 to 75 is coming in at, off the tee box about 230 yards. Um, uh, and then in the low 50s in terms of G GIR and fairway accuracy. Of course, pitted, pitted ag against Graham's numbers, um, they, they'd have a significant challenge. He's coming in at 270, 275 average distance off the tee box, which is, which is exactly, you know, from our system to the shot link system, it matches. Um, and then in terms of fairway accuracy and greens and regulation, again, we're in the, for Graham, we're in the, the, the mid 70s. Um, so quite a challenge to, to compete against this guy. Um, so that's, that's in terms of the demographics. Um, then in terms of 2014, you know, one of the things this, co this company has done really well is, is listen to our customers, listen to our, our partners, in particular the PGA professionals. Um, uh, you know, there, all year there was a desire to um, continue to release new features that would really help the PGA professional help the golfer to become a better golfer. Um, data on its own is dry. You gotta bring the data to life. The data has to tell a story. So we spend a lot of resources and time in figuring out how do you visualize that data? How do you bring that data to life? Um, and one of the, the you know, much sought after things this year was benchmarks, where um, across you know, fairway accuracy, greens and regulation, scrambling, sand saves, et cetera, drive distance, you could see how you're performing against Graham McDowell if you, if you want to go down that route, um, or against you know, the, the next uh, scoring group that you actually want to get to, that you want to, uh, you, that is your desired outcome. So if I'm a PGA professional, that's an invaluable tool because you can see you know, visually what people are doing on the course. You can see that, okay, sand saves is an area that really needs to be worked on. You know, scrambling is, you know, is probably the next area. Um, uh, you know, so you can see across, across those, me across those uh, data points what really needs to be worked on. Um, so it's, it's part of the holistic uh, picture, but it's a really important part, and it's a part that has been missing in the industry, um, you know, how golfers perform when they're playing on the golf course versus on the, the driving range. Some of the other innovations to the product over the course of last year, too, the round privacy that's been added, the challenges, and Graham, when we're talking about club performance, could you talk to us, you, you, you touched on it before, but the importance of, for the average golfer, to actually know what they're doing on the golf course so when they review this data, they know where their weaknesses are. It's not just conceptual, these are cold numbers. Yeah, very much so, and kind of like I alluded to earlier, it's not just about creating data. 
It's about the interpretation of that data, and I think, to me, that's one of the big, uh, big leaps forward that, that we've had at Game in the last 12 months is is graphical representation, and interpretation of the data, and you know, it's something that I struggle with, you know, on a month-to-month -month basis is getting, you know. Uh, generating numbers and but but being able to interpret those as to where's my game actually at what, what, what parts of my game need improving and uh, you know how do, how do I address that so um, um, understanding your equipment understanding understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are that's the key really to improving in this game and uh, you know systems like game um, producing the type of data the type of numbers the type of accurate data points that this thing's uh, uh, generating and uh, graphical representation of that data and helping you improve. And the online communities as well and comparing against your mates and having some fun with it. You know, I get tweets all the time from people, um, you know, comparing their putting stats to mine. And, and, really? And yeah, absolutely. I get, a lot, I get a lot of tweets where basically guys will, will, will kind of bang up their stats and, <laughs> and say, by the way, I'm hitting my driver 20 yards past you. Did you know that? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I think people would be, they'd, they'd be surprised to learn that they probably hit a seven iron as far as I do. My, mine just I tends do. to go a little further. Yeah, I do. I hit it as far as you. Absolutely. See, I mean, mine just goes a little closer to the flag on average, but uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun and and that that comparability uh, and sort of interactivity with your mates and and with with obviously you know players like myself and Jim Furyk and Lee Westwood posting posting runs on there. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Graham and John worked with the the game platform, the unit that you saw on the video and actually developing it into a part of one's pre-shot routine. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, you know, pre-shot routine is something I work very hard on. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of existing solutions um, to this GPS technology out there. A lot of them are um, uh, smartphone kind of uh, ready. And, uh, you know, we feel like the smartphone ready devices are not going to integrate seamlessly into the pre-shot routine the same way as game golf will. If I'll grab that club off you, you know, we feel like we feel like game can really insert perfectly into into a, a pre-shot routine. I mean, thinking about, you know, um, analyzing a shot of 165 yards to the flag, speak, talking to my caddy. So we, we take an eight iron. And the great thing is I can tag my belt and that can signify the beginning of my entire pre-shot routine. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, I've seen Ernie Els on the golf course. He, he has a trigger. Uh, he leaves his glove unopened yeah. until the point that he is ready to walk into his pre-shot routine. And we feel like, um, you know, as opposed to taking your iPhone out of your pocket and maybe GPS tagging, you know, via a smartphone, we feel like the simple act of taking the club out of the bag, being ready, tagging, Tagging your shot can be your on switch to walk in into your pre-shot routine. It's a lot more seamless. It integrates perfectly into the pre-shot routine, which is hugely key. And uh, you know, I try to use the same pre-shot routine for for every shot that I ever hit. You know, nine holes with my mates, uh, or you know, the second shot to the 18th hole at a Ryder Cup or a major championship. You know, making that pre-shot routine as as similar and as consistent as it can possibly be is a big key, and you don't really want to be interrupting that pre-shot routine with uh, with anything kind of which is abnormal. Perfect. I'm going to head down in the audience here in just a moment and take your questions for Graham McDowell and John McGuire as well. Before I descend the stairs here, John, I want to ask you: Here we are now, January 2015. What can we expect from game golf in the year ahead? Um, so 2014 was a year when, uh, leaving politics aside, the President of the United States wore our technology um, throughout the year. So that's pretty interesting and pretty probably hard to top. Do we have access to his data? Probably not. We, we, we need a Secret Service pass for that one. <laughs> um, so, you know, what we did this year was we, we listened very carefully to our customers, uh, to our PGA professionals, our partners, um, in developing something that would be very useful um, in, in understanding you know, what you're, what, what's in your bag, understanding what you shouldn't have in your bag. We found out there's, there's certain clubs in the bag that's never used. So we're, we're, we're gathering ver really valuable insights um, the more we mine our data, because we have a lot of data right now. How much so, has it surprised you, John, the data that you're getting? You know, it's pretty incredible. I mean, we're gathering data right now that I'm not going to talk a whole lot about 
but in terms of the industry that we're all in right now, you know, there is some very, very interesting data that goes contrary to a lot of the marketing that is happening out there in terms of uh, club performance, driver, driver performance, etc. We're seeing trends towards what younger golfers are beginning to use. We have a lot of mill millennials on our system um, that are tending towards certain brands in terms of drivers, etc., versus that, that, that older golfer. Um, so, you know, there's a, you know, for example, we're seeing that three woods and drivers are, are being hit the same distance. Um, and that's over our, normalized over our entire data set, of which is 96 countries, 170,000 rounds, 11 million golf shots. Wow. Uh, so we have the data. So 2015, to get to your question, 2015, we will continue to listen to our, our partners, uh, the PGA professionals. Um, we will continue to have Graham feeding into the R&D this product. You know, when an email comes in from Graham saying something that he, he thinks needs to be tweaked, you, you can imagine what happens in that office. People jump, we, we get to it. Good. Um, so 2015 is all about innovation. It's all about continuing to add uh, useful features that the PGA professional can use um, to, to, to just create a better experience for golfers. To, and then the social aspect is really important as well because we, we're, you know, when Graham shares a round, it's hitting his five, 600,000 followers, uh, and they can see his round of golf. Mm -hmm. But then when they share it, you know, you've got this network effect happening with golf where golf is getting out in front, in front of millions of people through the platform, mm -hmm. that some of which never golf, but you're putting golf in front of an audience that may not have seen golf before. So there's two things we're here to do. One is to, you know, grow the game with the PGA of America, and the other is to create a platform that really helps people uh, improve in the round of golf. Because if they improve, they'll enjoy it more, and if they enjoy it more, they're gonna play more often. And that helps everybody in the industry. And Graham was talking about the social aspect of the, the technology as well, and the fact that, Graham, have you used it with some of your buddies or, or some of friends back home? Yeah, you know, I, like I say, I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of social, uh, social networking activity with, with people uh, wanting to uh, follow me and, and compare rounds. And, uh, you know, I think that's the, that's the ultimate dream, really, is to, to have a large online community of people that, uh, that can interact kind of, you know, like a Facebook, uh, you know, Facebook for golf, if you like, but with real, real comparable statistics and, and data. And uh, it is fun to post some rounds on there and just to see the feedback from people. And John, that's the stuff that helps grow this game, too, because you're developing this web around the world. All right, we've got about uh, nine, ten minutes to take some questions here. Let's go right ahead. Hi. Hi, I'm uh, Fritz Schrank from the Cape Gazette. And uh, first, I'd like to tell um, Mac that uh, I enjoy his Mac IPA at Nona Blue this week. It's very good. Um, with respect to half shots, 50-yard approaches in and so forth, are you noticing any differences? Are you getting information about club choices? Or, or how do you do make a discreet between the folks who are really just trying to get these half shots in and what they might be doing with their full shots? Yes. Um, yeah. So, so in terms of um, club performance, um, you know, we have various algorithms in there that would exclude some of those shots from your actually from your stats. Um, so, so we have both. We, we know when people are taking the half shots based on their, their average of distances, and we know when they're taking their full shots. We know where the shots are going, so we can extrapolate a lot of data, a lot of uh, insights from that data. Mr. John, could you talk to everybody about where the product's being distributed right now, where they can pick it up, where they can get more info? Yeah, so the, you know, the industry has adopted the product fantastically well. It's, it's available in, in, right now we're approaching 1,000 pro shops and golf specialty sh shops um, across the U.S., Canada. I mean, it's in Europe. We're in 18 different markets right now, but I guess this is U.S., so yeah. So it's, it's available in all good pro shops, all good golf specialty shops. Good. We'll go with a couple more questions, sir. Stefan Barras, founder of Caddy Player. Uh, thank you, uh, Graham, for participating to my putting research. Uh, what about putting? When you know that uh, most of the tournaments are win on the putting green, so what can you tell me about uh, this? Measurement and data on the putting green, John. So the putting green is... Um, 
The, so we're, the technologies we're using are we're using GPS, we're using motion sensors. The motion sensors augment the GPS to make it more accurate. But putting is a putting is a is difficult to solve for because of because of the the distances. Um, and we have a number of approaches that we will be implementing over the next few months to really bring that data to life so that we can get actually valuable insights from the pudding. But pudding is definitely, uh, it's more of a challenge, for sure. All right, another question here. Sir? Hi, uh, my name's Pat Gibbons. I was one of the early investors. How important was Indiegogo to getting the product launched? Pat, without you, we couldn't have done it. So thank you for, for being there at the start. Indiegogo was, you know, G Game Golf is trying to do something different. It's trying to think, it's trying to bring uh, thought processes and design processes from outside of the industry into the industry. So companies such as Jawbone and Fitbit and, and Google and, and, other, and Facebook and others like that are involved in one way or another around the company. So we're constantly just trying to bring innovation into the industry. One of those things that we did differently was we, we were the first golf company, I believe, to go on one of those crowd social crowdfunding platforms. Um, so it gave us massive visibility. The industry seen us doing it, doing it very successful. Um, and really it opened the doors for game golf. It made our entry into the market much, much easier. And without Without our, I forget what the number was now, but without Pat, all you guys, you know, that was our first stepping stone um, to getting the baby up so the baby could walk. So it was hugely important, and, and we're very thankful for that. All right, let's go one more question. Sir. Thank you. Spud from Birmingham, uh, UAB, very proud of you, obviously. Um, John, it seems like a pretty good size investment for a golfer. Do you have something like an instructor package where a person at your place can go and try it for a round or two and then fall in love with and buy it? Absolutely. Our booth is, is right across from the Golf Channel uh, booth. Um, in fact, Julie, what is the number? So our booth number is 2465. We have a range of packages to, to suit every need. So if you call over there, we'd be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you. We have one more question coming from the farm here. John wants. Hello, guys. Uh, this yeah. is trouble, trouble here from Ireland. Uh, John McLaughlin from North and West Coast Lynx Golf. Uh, we've been talking to John for many years and, and uh, I suppose we're trying to help him at the very start and trying to give advice. I just want to say we're very proud as a Galway man, as an Irishman, we're very proud of what you've done and uh, to, see it, to see it come to here and we're wishing you every success for, for next year and the years ahead, John. Graham as well, a great ambassador for Ireland. Um, you know, the, the things that you do for Ireland, uh, they go unthanked a lot of times, so it gives me a chance to thank you in public. Thank you, Graeme. And Matt, our ambassador for Ireland, thank you very much as well. Cheers, John. Thank you so much. So now you know the booth number. It was, again, 2465, if you guys get a chance to check it out. Graham McDowell's schedule is absolutely mad here at this PGA Merchandise Show, as you can imagine. Graham, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support of game. John, congratulations. Thank you, Matt. You brought it from vision to reality. Folks, a round of applause. Thank you for your company.